Hola amigos! Today you're going to learn how to read Spanish. That's right, you are going to learn how to read Spanish and how to pronounce it correctly. So, uh, the way it works in Spanish is that every country's got a little bit different pronunciation, but I'm going to teach you how to do the universal pronunciation, what's going to be understood everywhere. And I'm going to discuss a little at the very end of what, what the differences of pronunciation are, but it's not that relevant if you're just starting to learn how to read. Uh, now, just a little bit of disclaimer, I am not Latino, this is not my first language. Pero he, he vivido en el barrio de Nueva York, and I've kind of picked up street Spanish, which is in New York City, a combination of, of PR and DR, Puerto Rican and Dominican dialects. So, what we're going to do cover today is going to be universally understood. So, if you can copy what I do, you will got it. You got it down, man. All right, so the first thing you have to understand in Spanish is no letter left behind. That's right, no letter left behind. Now, see, the thing of no letter left behind, Every single letter is enunciated. There are no silent letters like in English. That just doesn't happen. There are also no doubled up letters. So like the word effect in English is E-F-F-E-C-T. In Spanish, it's almost the same word, it's efecto. You just drop an F, E-F-E-C-T-O, efecto. So there are no double letters in Spanish. That's the first thing. So every letter is pronounced. Now if you see here at the very end, it says que, well, that's um, the Spanish word for what. That's the one exception. When there is a U following the Q, that is kind of ignored just the same way English does. So Q-U-E is pronounced K. Um, the other thing is when you put either an exclamation point or a question mark, you simply invert it and put it at the beginning too. That's pretty simple. All right, you're starting to read. All right, now the next thing is most of the letters are pretty much the same. So every single letter in this dialogue, in this center line here, is pretty much the same as in English. So we're going to just skip over all of those. Um, you've got about half the vocabulary, half the alphabet now, by the way. Um, we just started. Now the top letters are the vowels. Now the way vowels work is it sounds just like the English vowels in their softer form. So simple, some words in English have a double, um, two different sounds to the, to the vowels. So like the word acceptable. The A in the beginning is an A, ah, and the A at the end of the word acceptable is an A, ah, abel. Ex accept abel. So everything is the softer one, the abel sound. So it's a ah for a, e is e, i is i, o is o, u is u. It's exactly like the English words. Um, and now to make it a little more like simple, it's a, e, i, o, u. There's not much more to this. So like the English word idea, that's a very American pronunciation, idea. If you just do it, it's id, id, I, uh, idea. I don't know if I did that well, but either way, idea. That's proper Spanish. Idea, proper English. Now the other thing is the Y is is just like English, where it is, is sometimes a vowel, but in Spanish it's usually the vowel. So like the word and, it's just the letter Y. It's E. So Y is E. So like, ex, um, acceptably. Yeah, that ends in Y. Acceptably, the Y at the end is an E sound. It's not like Y, like yes. It's um, absolutely, that Y, the E at the end, that's from a Y. That's the Y. In Spanish, it's almost always the vowel, but not always. All right, we got two lines. You got half the, half the, span, half the reading of Spanish now. Um, when you mix two letters together, sort of like these, two, these here, same exact thing like English. So a ch, a sh, a th, same thing. PH does not exist in proper Spanish. Um, it becomes an F, but that's only if it's spelled that way. Um, so there is no PH spelling in, in Spanish, it's always just converted to an F. So now we're pretty, we're, that's pretty easy so far, right? All right, well, well good. Now let's go alphab in alphabetical order of the letters that are different. Starting with C. C is pretty much an S in Spanish, except if you are in the country of Spain. Now, <clears throat> that's one of the exceptions of the dialect. So S in Spain becomes a TH, like the word the, the. So the word gracias, which has a C in the middle, becomes gracias, gracias, gracias. All right, so that's just, that's pretty much one of the only few exceptions. That's Spain. We're gonna get to one more exception later that from, from a different country, we'll get there. But gracias, gracias. So C is almost always an S. And in English, I think it is all, it, it, it's also interchangeable, so it's pretty similar. Next letter is the G, which, this is the hard one. Now, if, any, if anyone watching this has uh, knowledge of other languages that have the ch sound, like German, Arabic, Hebrew, Russian, any of these languages with the ch sound, well, that's your G. You got this, man. <laughs> All right, so 
G becomes a G in most languages. Now, if you're really har hardcore North American, you can't do that, just make it an H. He. He. Mi gente instead of mi gente. So, all right, anyway, that's no problem. This G becomes a G if you can do it. H if you can't, you'll be understood. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Don't worry about it. Now, the letter H, um, <laughs> just drop it. Just skip it. It doesn't exist. So if you see H in a word, just skip it like it doesn't exist. It's fine. They don't, no, no one really pronounces that in Spanish. Um, J, the actual letter J. Same thing, it becomes a G, basically. Um, G can be the G or the J, just like in English. The G or the J, depending on which part of the word, which part of the word order it goes in. And the, the grammar rules are pretty much identical to New York, to New York, to uh, English. So G is, is a G or a, or a J. And the J sound is always a G. Got it? Hopefully. All right. <laughs> Next letter is L. A regular L, a single L, is pretty much the same but lighter. So instead of saying elephant, it's elephant. Like you touch your tongue to the top of your mouth and it's elephant. El -el 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 All right. Now, the exception to the rule is when you have a two L's following each other. Now, I told you before, no letter for left behind, right? How can you have two L's? Well, you can't. It's a different letter. It's considered like a different letter when there's two L's together, okay? If it's, the sound is L, it's always one L. If there's two L's, it becomes like a Y. Yeah, yeah. Yabe, like, like, uh, yeah, like your key. Um, so now, if you are in Argentina, it's not a Y. It's a SH. So, um, adisha is uh, squirrel. Adia is also squirrel. You only you can always just use the double L as a Y sound. Adia, yeah, 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 yeah. But you have to know that if someone says adisha, that's adia, same word. Um, so all you got to do is know the rules of Spain and Argentina, and you're good. So remember, Spain is S sound becomes th. And in Argentina, the double L, which is a Y normally, becomes a SH. Other than that, that's all you gotta do. You gotta know. You don't have to speak it back to them in, the, in their same dialect. You, they'll understand you if you say, al dia, al it's all, it's all good. Uh, gracias, gracias, it's all good. Don't worry about it. You just have to understand when they speak what that means. Next word, N. Regular N is a regular N. N with that little squiggly is basically like the letters N and Y together. So, um, nia, basically. Nia, nia, nia. That's it. Just add a Y. When you see the squiggly, just pretend that's a little Y that falls right in front of it. Next letter is R. Single R is pretty much a single R, except when it's in the front of the word, when you have to roll it. Ricardo, Ricardo. Now, Ricardo is a good word because it has an R in the middle and an R at the end, uh, and almost at the end. So the first R, the initial one's Ricardo. And the second one, Ardo, Ardo, it's just a regular R. But if you see two R's, again, no letter left behind, two R's is also roll because you're pronouncing both R's. That's the whole thing. So when you pronounce both R's, it's rolled like the letter R twice. R twice R. Okay? That's the hard one, by the way. North Americans, man, pff, that's a tough one to get used to. It took me a while. But it, you know, Ricardo. So, all right. Last, next letter is the letter V. V you can just flip to a B. It's kind of a little lighter than a B is supposed to be, but it's a B. Just UCV, it's the letter B. That's it. So, um, the, like the city of Havana, Habana, that's it, Habana. Simple as that. Z switches to an S. So, zebra, like zebra. And S becomes TH if you're in Spain, so zebra. I don't know if they do that, by the way, um, <laughs> on that word. But zebra, okay, Z, Z if you're uh, British, just becomes S. That's it. Same exact sound as the C, the S, and the Z. All three letters, same exact sound. Um, now, the, oh, you know what? That's the end. <laughs> Go figure. That's it. You did it. Congratulations. Yay! You can read Spanish. Yo, 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 yo,